Um, a little bit better about myself. Um, I'm, I'm Stuart Adelberg. Um, I grew up here in town, went to what was Central Junior High School at the time, graduated from Greenwich High School. And while many people in town are aware of the work that I do with the United Way, in fact, I have quite a varied um, background in music and in the performing arts. Um, I grew up here in town as a participant of the Greenwich Summer Youth Festival. I met my wife and some of my lifelong friends while participating in Connecticut Playmakers. And I'm very proud to say I just completed um, directing my 18th annual musical at St. Catherine's Players in, uh, in Riverside. Um, so no stranger to the performing arts. Um, though Mary has shared a little bit of their more recent history of why we're here this evening, I'd like to briefly share some of the early history of the Havermeyer building and its significance to the Greenwich community. The building was, as Mary said, originally a gift to the town of Greenwich Meeting House School District made by the Havermeyer family. They were part-time residents of Greenwich, and they noted how the community was growing in the late 1800s. Henry and Louis Sen, and I'm sure I said her name wrong, Havemeyer were known to be extremely generous philanthropists, and they made the gift of the Havemeyer building in 1892, as indicated by some tiles that are still on the floors near one of the entrances of the building. Apparently, the school opened for use as an elementary school in 1894. The Havemeyer sponsored a national design contest to select the architects of the building, and it was apparently considered to be quite ahead of its time when it was designed and constructed. The building, again as Mary said, is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as a contributing structure to the Greenwich Municipal Center Historic District. It's significant to note that in the 1890s, steel construction was not widely in use as we know it today. The reason that this is relevant is that it speaks to the challenges that exist in altering the facility for different uses. All of the interior walls are load-bearing, which means that moving them to create different spaces presents a very difficult and extremely expensive challenge. If you tour the facility today, you would immediately notice that little has changed since the building's completion in 1894. Spaces have been carved out by using paneling and wallboard and other temporary means to avoid the expense of major construction needed to change the layout of the facility and yet use it as offices for the Board of Education. One of the key pieces of the school is a theater that has not been used in many years. In fact, there's now a drop ceiling in the theater supporting the HVAC systems. You can, however, still see the proscenium arch over the original stage, which has a Latin inscription, which roughly translates to, for the community and its people. And there you see a slide. We've had the opportunity to share our vision with some members of the Havemeyer family. And here you see the comments of Bill Havemeyer, the great-grandson of Henry and Louis Sen, Havemeyer. And clearly, he's in favor of what we've proposed. Next slide. When the vision of turning the building into an art center was initially proposed, our small task force was asked by local leaders to go out into the community and determine if this was something that was truly needed and desired by the greater Greenwich community. So we set out to do a survey of over 100 organizations involved in arts and culture with overwhelmingly positive response. We did a town-wide survey on the town's website with 84% of the respondents indicating that this was something the town should have and in fact was one of the very few amenities available in almost every other community in the region yet lacking here in Greenwich, Connecticut. The results of our surveys led to detailed discussions and input from approximately 30 of the responding organizations and this input was used as essential information shared with our architects to determine some of the most needed and desired spaces within a center for the arts. This work continues today as we learn of new specific needs of the community and work to see how best to accommodate them within a refurbished facility. Key to everything we've done from the outset and through today is the idea that what we envision is a community arts center available, accessible, and desirable to all. We are not working to create something of value for some subgroup of the community. This center can and must be welcoming and offer something of value to everyone, people of all ages and backgrounds, the kind of open gathering place that some of us remember of Greenwich Avenue many years ago when it was truly where all people tended to meet on weekends. Of course, the primary question on many people's minds is who will ultimately benefit from the creation of a community arts center. Next slide. And here, in no uncertain terms, you can see what we believe is the answer to that very important question. Next slide. This is just a very brief overview of some of the spaces which will be further embellished by our architect. But you can see some of today's plans include 
the, uh, really the idea of meeting, uh, addressing interests and needs of all citizens of all ages, from fine arts to literary arts, from performing arts to dance to ceramics to music, um, and of course, as you see, the 400-seat proscenium theater, 125-seat black box theater. Um, but we tend to always focus on the performing, and yet, in fact, our vision is really to deal with all of the arts in what we call a multi-arts community center. Now, it's my pleasure to end my section by introducing Peter Gisalfi, architect and founder of Peter Gisalfi Associates. Though it is now several years ago that we interviewed architects and had the wisdom to go forward with Peter Gisalfi, I will never forget how encouraging he was to our effort when he made, next slide, this particular statement indicating how much he felt this was an appropriate and exciting reuse of this truly historic structure. So with that, I will invite Peter Gisalfi.